I've spent weeks, or has it been months, looking and watching different gaming videos to figure out what's the secret, what makes these videos so good. Then one day, in my coffee-fueled haze, it hit me. I was ready to share this secret with the world, to reveal everything I've learned. But first, I needed to see an expert. I've got it, Alan. I know the secret. The law of attraction? No, the secret to great gaming videos. It's story. How much coffee have you had? This is Alan. He's an award-winning screenwriter, filmmaker, and he also makes videos on YouTube. I sat down with him to have a chat about what makes a great story and how we can apply it to gaming videos. Also, to make this even better, I'm gonna take everything we say in this video to help my shimmer friend Irish make her next video. With all good stories, you have to have a character and a conflict. They're the two most important things. If you don't have your character in conflict, there's no way you can build the story at all. The goal as to what the character wants to achieve the conflict is the thing that's going to stop them from achieving it. You need those obstacles and then you need stakes. You need reasons why the character needs to achieve what they want to achieve. Uh, it's something that Mr. Beast tends to do really well in every single one of his videos. The one that I'm going to be talking about is the one where he said he was going to spend 50 hours underground. He did it really well for this video because he said that if he doesn't complete this, then his friends get to tase him. If for whatever reason I get out early, you guys get to tease me. Which is an equally crazy thing, and we're gonna stick around as the audience to find out whether Mr. Beast wins this or whether his friends win and they get to tease him. And a good stake is establishing to your audience why this means something to you. Why do you want to complete this? What is your reason? And it can be anything at all. It, it doesn't have to be as wild as if you don't get it done, then your friends are gonna tease you. It doesn't always have to be a high stake. It just has to be a high level of value. So with all that said, can this be applied to YouTube videos? And if so, what kind of things can gaming creators do to improve their content? Oh, it absolutely applies to them. They, they, will, they will get so much more out of this. Because once upon a time, we lived in an age where everyone was pretty much doing the same thing with the Let's Plays. They were letting the games do the talking. We're in an age now where we're going to do the talking. We make the choices as to what happens in the story. We make the choices as to how to entertain people. Before starting out on any piece of content, it's important to understand two things. Who is your character and what is their goal? In a gaming video, you're usually your character, but what is your goal? A goal is something your character, i.e. you, need to achieve by the end of the video, and the main reason that your audience is going to stick around to the end is to see whether you achieve set goal. Understanding this will give your video a direction and help you to capture more relevant sections when you're live. This is going to make the editing process a lot simpler too. With this in mind, we spoke to Irish and discussed potential ideas for a story that can be created while she was live, and she came up with this. My chat loves seeing me scream. And I think what would be really fun probably would be me trying not to and them trying to make me. I think the only way to do that is to play professional by myself, which I hate playing by myself. I absolutely hate it. It terrifies me. So I think a professional no scream kind of challenge would be really fun. So we got to work. With a two hour stream recorded, I took it over to Final Cut Pro to start looking for the best bits. I was looking for high energy moments. Things like jump scares and Irish getting scared are things that her audience love to watch. And I was also looking for potential storylines that Alan could pick from. And with that, I started to assemble the edit, creating sequences of mini stories that took the viewer on a journey. Things that had the potential to be a running narrative and finding plot twists and exciting moments that could take the story into new directions. And on the technical side, one awesome thing that Irish did was she recorded her audio onto multiple channels, which gave me much more flexibility to do some awesome things in the edit. For example, turning down the jump scares, boosting your microphone, or turning it off completely. And this is stuff I've spoken about in previous videos, because she gives you that flexibility in the edit to make creative decisions later on. Once I had a timeline of mini sequences, I sent it to Alan to look through and pick out a potential story. When writing a story for a video, I use a process that Sam and I coined the ICE framework. That's intro, content, and ending. Before starting to work on the intro, I wanted to understand the journey that we were taking our audience on and decided to raise the stakes. I did this by adding an additional clause to Irish's story. If she didn't complete three games, she would have to do a nightmare run. That way, every single game counted so people would be more likely to stick around to the end. Next, I broke the content down into sections, parts of the story which would play on different emotions. For instance, her first scream happened so early on, I knew it was going to give the impression that she was going to fail. Damn it. Then I wrote some small voiceover and A-roll sections for Irish to record so that she could add tension and humor to the moments that were already in her story. Now I knew what the journey was, I felt more confident about writing the intro. Every great intro has a setup, hook, 
and tease. The setup is pretty much one sentence or moment which introduces us to the character and conflict. In this example, we have Irish as the main character and her conflict is the fact that she needs to complete the no scream challenge. Tonight, we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna be playing Phasmophobia solo on professional and to make it a little bit more exciting for you and a whole lot more challenging for me, I'm not allowed to scream. The hook is the part which shows our audience what this journey is going to be like. So for this, Irish is going to have to complete three games without screaming, and we want to make it very clear that it isn't going to be easy. Finally, we have the tease, which is going to reveal either the stakes of the video or the value that the audience is going to get by watching. So I made it clear that if Irish didn't complete this challenge, she was going to have to do a nightmare run and showed that she had made it as difficult for herself as possible. And the challenge is, is I have to complete three full runs or else I have to do a nightmare run. Yeah, nightmare. With the intro written and the content sewed together nicely, I focused on the end. I didn't want to make it clear that the video was going to be over. So instead I sent our audience off to watch another piece of her content. But there was a time where chat was on their game and you can watch that video here where I scream at absolutely everything. <laughs> Once Alan had scripted the story and Irish had recorded the extra stuff, it was then time to bring everything together. I started off by slimming down the edit, removing jump scares that I felt took away from the overall story. It's great to have those in and scare the audience, but too much of it can seem boring and repetitive. So instead, I focused on moments where the scares were genuine and unexpected and took the audience by surprise. Even me, once or twice. I also added zooms and punch-ins to direct the audience on where to look, as well as emphasize the scare even more. And one great thing to add a bit more polish to your edit is to add things like graphics like text or subtitles these work well for emphasizing funny moments or for bringing attention to things that happen in your video for example in this section here irish is frozen in place by her chat so i added some text to add some extra context to that moment another cool way of adding polish is by adding what's called a call to action to your video and the sponsor of today's video visuals by impulse has a great new tool called super that allows you create custom call to action animations that you can use in your videos and live streams they have a ton of social media platforms to pick from with more being added every single week and they are super easy to customize just select a template that you like add in all of your info and the animation is there ready for you to use and you can then download them and use them in things like obs or in your favorite video editing software and they're super cheap costing anywhere from two to five dollars each which is incredibly affordable for animations this good and you can make your own just by visiting the link down below in the description so i made one for irish and use it inside of the video but i didn't stop there. Then I started to add music and sound design to bring it all together and create a feeling within my edit. Adding extra layers of sound design like heartbeats and slow rises and music tracks to create a suspenseful atmosphere and using that to invoke a feeling within the audience. Creating emotion is one of the most important parts of telling a good story. So you want to spend a bit more time and put a bit more effort into this part of the process. And trust me, it'll be worth it. Once you've nailed down what your story is going to be, it's crucial that you get the editing stage right as this could make or break your video. Which is why in this video, I break down some of the biggest mistakes that I see people do when it comes to making their videos and how you can avoid them. And if you wanna see a more detailed breakdown on how you can turn any video, no matter what your niche, into a story, then go ahead and check out Alan's video right here. Both of these will help you make better videos. So go ahead, check them out next. And until next time, take care.